Right in the heart of Beijing, it was the home of emperors for 500 years. It has witnessed China's major political events during imperial times and ever since. The Forbidden City, its 900 halls and palaces, constitute the largest wooden building complex in the world. And its palace museum houses a vast collection of imperial artworks and artifacts from Ming and Qing times. Watch the Forbidden City on Journeys in Time. This residence, which has a history of more than 500 years, once housed two families. One had the family name of Zhu, and the other had the family name of Ai Xin Zhuo Luo. And there are many stories about events that took place here. On August the 14th, 1901, as the eight foreign powers fought their way into Beijing, Emperor Guangxu fled the Forbidden City, and his favorite concubine, Zhen Fei, met her death. The official court document on this matter contains only a few words on the cause of her death. The report given by Empress Dowager Cixi on the matter states, Last year, when the capital fell, the retinues of concubine Zhen Fei failed to protect her. In order to maintain her chastity, she killed herself in the court. What she did was truly commendable. So I have decided to give her the posthumous title of highest ranking imperial concubine. However, a different story about the concubine's demise was told by eunuch Tui Yugui, who played a key role in her death. On the afternoon of August the 14th, Tui was ordered by Empress Dowager Cixi to fetch concubine Zhen Fei, who had been placed in confinement for years, and bring her to the Chamber of Harmonious Union. Zixi told Zhen Fei, foreign troops are fighting their way into our city. We have to flee here for our safety. We cannot take you with us. Zhen Fei responded, you can go to a safer place, but the emperor should stay in the capital to keep things in order. Zixi snapped, how dare you talk that nonsense when your death is imminent? Zhen Fei replied, I haven't committed any crime punishable by death. Zixi said, no matter whether you have committed a crime or not, you have to die. Drown her in the well.
To unveil this mystery, we need to follow in the footsteps of concubine Genfei as she leads her life in the imperial court. When ancient Chinese looked up into the sky and observed astronomical phenomena, they believed that the brightest star was Polaris and that the other stars surrounding Polaris formed the Polaris Wall. According to legend, the Polaris Wall was the dwelling place of the God of Heaven and his family. As the Emperor claimed to be the son of the God of Heaven, the earthly project of the Polaris Wall was the dwelling place of the Emperor and his family, namely the Forbidden City. This scroll shows officials being received and tributes being accepted on behalf of the Emperor in the Forbidden City on Chinese New Year's Day. High-ranking nobles, ministers and diplomatic envoys from all over the world are seen waiting in the square in front of the Hall of Supreme Harmony for the ceremony to begin. However, the throne in the hall is clearly empty, so where is the Emperor? Looking over the palace's many walls, we can see living quarters that are quite different from the buildings in the working area. In the living quarters, the children of the emperor, just like any other children outside the palace, are enthusiastically letting off firecrackers. The empress and the concubines of the emperor, like mothers outside the palace, take care of their children. And just like fathers outside the palace, the emperor enjoys the happiness brought by a family. The gate of heavenly purity divided the forbidden city into two parts, the working area in the south and the living quarters in the north. The living quarters consisted of the Palace of Heavenly Purity, the Palace of Earthly Tranquility, the Hall of Union and Peace, and the six palaces on the east and west of these three palaces. And altogether, they constituted the home of the Emperor. The palace where the Emperor slept is called the Palace of Heavenly Purity, and the palace where the Emperor slept is called the Hall of Earthly Tranquility. The Hall of Union and Peace is located between the Palace of Heavenly Purity and the Palace of Earthly Tranquility. These buildings were arranged in this way to convey the meaning that heaven and earth come together, and so do yin and yang. In the Forbidden City, decorative patterns featuring phoenixes can be found only in the Hall of Union and Peace. And the halls are named in this way to indicate that the emperor and his emperors and concubines make love and create children. In the winter of 1888, when young girls from all over the country gathered in the Imperial Garden, they all knew that one of them would become the Empress of the Qing Dynasty. The Empresses and concubines of the Chinese Emperors had mostly come from noble families or families that had accumulated power. However, consolidating imperial rule by becoming related by marriage to noble families often resulted in political crises. Accordingly, in order to prevent relatives of the emperor on the side of his mother or wife from competing with the emperor himself for power, the Ming Dynasty's first emperor, Zhu Yuanzhang, changed the old customs and made it clear that the empress and concubines of the emperor should come from among the common people. In the Qing dynasty, the emperors and concubines of the emperor were mainly selected from among beautiful girls of privileged families under the banner system. During the reign of Emperor Xunzhu, it was stipulated that daughters between 13 and 17 of all the officials of Man, Mongol and Han origin under the banner system should take part in the beauty selection held once every three years. Among these girls, one would be chosen as the empress, while some others would be made concubines of the emperor. 
In the meantime, this event was also a good opportunity to find wives for the sons and grandsons of the imperial family, as well as other relatives of the emperor. If a girl had not been chosen by the age of 17, she could marry elsewhere. In 1888, after repeated selections and assessments, five girls were finally lucky enough to reach the final stage. They were the daughter of Gui Xiang, Emperor Dowager Sixi's younger brother, two daughters of De Xin, the governor of Jiangxi, and two daughters of Chang Xu, senior vice president of the Board of Rights. But none of them knew that the woman standing behind the emperor would be the person who would decide their fates. As to what the selection of the empress and maids of different ranks for Emperor Guangxu was like, Tang Guangqing, a eunuch present at the time, provides this detailed description. The selection took place in the Hall of Manifest Harmony. A Rui jade handle and two pairs of embroidered pouches were prepared beforehand. The girl who received the Rui handle would be the empress, and those who received the embroidered pouches would be the concubines of the emperor. With the Rui jade handle in his hand, Emperor Guangxu approached the eldest daughter of Dershin and was about to hand it to her. But at this very moment, Empress Dowager Sushi spoke loudly, Emperor. In doing this, she was hinting that the jade handle should be given to Gui Xiang's daughter. Guangxu had no choice but to do as Sushi was hinting. Sushi made Guangxu choose a girl whom he did not love, as she was worried that if the daughters of Dershin became concubines of the Emperor, they would most likely use all their ingenuity to win the favor of the Emperor. Sushi, therefore, did not allow Guangxu to choose the concubines himself, but instead instructed him to give the embroidered pouches to Chang Xu's two daughters instead of De Xin's daughters. As it happened, the girl with whom Guangxu had fallen in love at first sight was not chosen either as the empress or even as a concubine. Su Xi's niece became the empress, and the two daughters of Chang Xu became concubines Jin Fei and Jin Fei, and their fate was changed in an instant. These women who were married to the emperor as empress or as concubines were categorized into different ranks and lived in different halls. During the Ming Dynasty, there were twelve ranks. Starting from the reign of Emperor Kangxi, the empress and concubines of different ranks were ranked in accordance with an eight-rank system. Empress, imperial honored consort, two honorable concubines, four imperial concubines, and six imperial concubines of the third rank. There were three ranks of concubines below the fourth-ranked concubine, they were called worthy ladies, ladies-in-waiting, and responders, respectively, and their numbers were not fixed. Altogether, these women made up the emperor's harem, but the numbers of concubines each emperor had varied considerably. Emperor Kangxi, for example, had 79 concubines, whereas Emperor Guangxu had only one empress and two concubines. But who could become the empress, the mistress in charge of the living quarters? When the crown prince or the young emperor married for the first time, he did not make decisions for himself. Instead, it was his father or mother, the empress dowager, who had the final say. Therefore, the girl who became the empress was usually not the one the emperor found the most attractive, but the one considered the most suitable for the system of power that operated. On the 27th day of the first lunar month of 1889, when the wedding ceremony of Emperor Guangxu officially commenced, Empress Long Yu left her home in a sedan chair for the Forbidden City. chamber was in the palace of earthly tranquility, the palace where empresses in the Ming dynasty had slept. 
Since the beginning of the Qing dynasty, however, it had been used to offer sacrifices to gods during festivals. But when there was a great wedding ceremony in the court, the Dong Nuan chamber would become the bridal chamber, the place where the newly married couple would stay for three days. For Emperor Guangxu, this was not only the day when he would become a husband, it meant that he was going to become the real ruler of the country. Empress Dowager Cixi had declared that as soon as the wedding ceremony was over, she would be giving up politics. And this was the day Emperor Guangxu had waited for for 15 years. On the night of December the 5th, 1874, Zai Tian, just four years old, had been brought into the Forbidden City. Only a few hours before, Emperor Tongju had died of illness at the age of 19, leaving behind no children. Zai Tian left his warm home and became Emperor Guangxu, beginning a reign that lasted 34 years. The Palace of Nurturing Success, located in the eastern part of the Imperial Palace, was the dwelling place of crown princes in the Qing Dynasty. When Guangxu was five years old, he was taught how to be an emperor. The young emperor's classroom was inside the Palace of Nurturing Success. Crown princes in the Qing Dynasty could only live in the living quarters of the Forbidden City with their parents up until the age of ten, after which they had to move out of the living quarters to live in the Palace of Nurturing Success or in one of the three remote halls in the south. After they had been conferred with the title of Prince, they had to move out of the Forbidden City and take up residence in their own place. It can be said that, without doubt, the most durable memory in the mind of a Crown Prince was the period in which he received his schooling. Before daybreak, the Crown Prince would begin by learning how to write poems and read classical Confucian texts under the supervision of his teachers. Besides this, a tutor would teach him the man language, while others would teach him horsemanship and archery. He had to study or practice until dusk. The Qing Dynasty spared no efforts in the education of its Crown Princes. The imperial family had probably learned something from the experience of the previous imperial family in the Ming Dynasty. Although crown princes in the Ming Dynasty were supposed to go out and have lessons, the system had not been strictly implemented. So although the twelve Qing emperors were different from each other in terms of innate gifts and potential, most of them administered state affairs diligently. All this should be attributed to the education system arranged for the crown princes. Day in and day out, Guangxu studied, learned, and matured. Although this small courtyard in the Forbidden City may not be particularly attractive, it is nevertheless a very popular tourist destination. From the time of the reign of the Qing Emperor Yong Zhang, it was used as the bedroom of emperors.
This is the only bedroom of an emperor that can be seen in China today, but it looks basically the same as it did when Emperor Guangxu used it. Many people are surprised when they see how small the bedroom is, but the fact is the first builders of the Forbidden City designed it simply as a place for a temporary rest. After it was upgraded to the bedroom of the emperor, the emperor made the interior furnishing as luxurious as possible to match the dignity of the Son of Heaven. According to records and furnishings in the Hall of Mental Cultivation, in the second year of the reign of Emperor Tongju, there were 724 articles on display in this room. One bed was placed on each side of the Hall of Mental Cultivation. It was said that the bed in the east side was for the Empress, while the bed in the west was for a concubine. It was also said that the Emperor always lowered the curtains of the two beds exactly at the same time before going to bed, so as to confuse any would-be assassin, because in this way, no one would be able to tell in which bed he was sleeping. It was the custom to keep early hours in the Forbidden City. And as for how people rose for the day, He Rung Ar, a female servant of Empress Dowager Cixi, provided details with regards to how Cixi got up in the morning. As soon as the lamp in Cixi's bedroom was on, her female servants would bend over the ground and wish her good luck. After they made the bed for her, they brought a basin of hot water with a silver basin to Cixi. Cixi wrapped her hands in a hot towel and soaked it in hot water for a long time, and so the water had to be changed twice or thrice. In so doing, the back of the hands and the joints of the fingers were made very comfortable. This was one of the approaches used by Cixi to stay healthy. After that, she washed her face, but this was not a common way of washing her face. To be precise, a hot towel was put on her face. In so doing, the wrinkles on the face would be greatly reduced. After all these procedures were over, Cixi took the seat in front of the dressing table. Word was then passed for a eunuch to comb her hair, paint her eyebrows, powder her face, and rouge her cheeks. Then Sushi would smoke two pipes of snuff and sip a cup of milk tea. She was accustomed to drinking milk from humans and cows. Sushi enjoyed dressing up very much, and she told others that this was important. She often said, if a woman does not have the mood to dress herself up, her life will be dull. It was a kind of public secret in the court that the emperor and the empress had become estranged. The fact was, Guangxu had never felt affectionate towards his wife because the decision to marry her had not been made by himself but by Cixi. Cixi had wanted to consolidate her own power and had been their matchmaker. But this match had resulted in a couple that was estranged. The high walls of the Forbidden City separated the twelve palaces and courtyards from the outside world. These twelve buildings were located symmetrically opposite each other and looked almost the same. They were just like two arms located next to the three rear palaces, and it was here that the Emperor's concubines lived. Their fate was in the hands of the only man in the living quarters, the Emperor. In some cases, the emperor gave all his love to just one woman who was said to be lucky. In most cases, the women living here had to face the reality of enduring loneliness. As for how the emperor called a concubine to his bedroom, a story had long circulated among the common people. It was said that the concubine was wrapped in a quilt and carried to the bedroom on the back of a eunuch. But was this true? Every afternoon, when the emperor was having his dinner, all his concubines would come to the Hall of Peace and Happiness in the backyard of the Hall of Mental Cultivation and wait there in silence. After the emperor had finished his meal, 
He would make it clear who he desired to sleep with that night. Right in the heart of Beijing, it was the home of emperors for 500 years. It has witnessed China's major political events during imperial times and ever since. The Forbidden City, its 900 halls and palaces, constitute the largest wooden building complex in the world. And its palace museum houses a vast collection of imperial artworks and artifacts from Ming and Qing times. Watch The Forbidden City on Journeys in Time.